Hi, I'm Andy Weinberg with Miller Welders Motorsports. Today, we're in McKenzie, Tennessee with Jack Elam of J&J Auto Racing. Jack, tell me a little bit about your business. J&J Auto Racing has been building sprint cars and sprint car components for over 40 years. What do you primarily build your cars out of? Primarily, we're working with 4130 normalized tubing. We also build with some high strength Docal R8. Now the Docal R8, that's the same material that the automotive manufacturers are using to build their cars now, right? It's been used in the automotive industry for, some, for approximately 18 to 20 years. For the last th three years, it has been introduced into the racing industry, especially in the NHRA drag racing industry and also now we're using it into the sprint car industry. Now when welding the 4130 chromoly, it's a very temperature sensitive base metal. Fit up of the tubing is very critical. Tell me a little bit about your fixture here that you have. The fit up is the critical part. It's, it's naturally as the welding also. The reason that we have the fixture laid out like it is is try to be a more universal where we can build more than one wheelbase car and change the motor setting and the wheelbase of the car and actually have the frame clamped down on the table when the welding procedure begins that it won't move around. So everything stays in place in a very precise manner. Now with the 4130, you're typically TIG welding it here. We TIG weld everything. We TIG weld the 4130 as well as the Docal R8. Our guys use, they like to use the foot and use the foot control and it, and it gets to be a combination of hand and eye and foot in getting the precise weld on the frame. We do have different thicknesses with the inch and a half 95 down to some inch and a quarter 65. So there's a lot of variation in the thickness and we have some 58 as well as 49 wall thicknesses on the frame. So there's a lot of control in the, in the arc that's welding the frame. So it also, that pulsing using the foot pedal from a high to a low level, that's also critical in keeping the heat zone down, the heat effect zone down yeah. on the chromoly. Yeah. Because that heat effect zone is where cracks will develop. And the, the narrower we keep that, the less potential we have of the chrome molly cracking, especially in an impact or a crash. Yeah, of a failure. And we, we've we experienced that the 4130 is probably a little more critical. The dough call, we weld it in the same procedure though, and we try to fit both pieces up uh, as precise one as the other. So, but both pieces are, we're using really close to the same procedure. The dough call seems to have though, in the end result, a better stretch and pull than the 4130. So that weld joint, the dough call, the high strength steel, isn't as uh, sem sensitive in that heat effect zone. That heat effect zone doesn't become brittle after right. welding. It still maintains that stretch, which is important in a crash or an impact because the dough call will stretch more and it'll actually forgive more than the chromoly tubing. And I think that's why a lot of the, some of the major sanctioning bodies okay. are going to it because not only does it stretch more in an impact, but the cycle times are a lot longer with the dough call too. So yeah. whereas if you're in a high stress situation, the 4130 over a period of time will start to develop stress cracks. That's right, and a lot of that has to do with the thickness of the material on, on either part and how we actually build the frame and how light the frames are. And different frames are possibly lighter than the other, but the dough call is a, just an alternative to the 4130. So we are leaving it to the customer and the teams to have an alternative to do either way, to go either way. Gotcha. So what filler metal do you primarily use when welding your chassis together? We're primarily using an ER80 SD2 in 1 16th diameter. We also use a 45,000 
material welding some of the thinner parts such as the one inch 049 material. So now we're going to get started doing some welding on this chassis. We'll be using the Dynasty 210DX TIG Runner package with a wireless foot pedal. Jack likes to use the wireless foot pedal when working around his jigs and fixtures because it's easy to kick around the plate without having to worry about the extra cable getting caught on stuff. They're constantly moving around this chassis when doing the welding on it to reduce the pull and draw that would happen if you started on one side of the chassis and worked your way all the way around. By the time you finished, the chassis would be fairly warped. So the wireless foot pedal is an awesome option when considering welding around a fixture or some place that you have to be moving around constantly. Some of the features of the Dynasty 210DX is that it has a pulser built into the front of the machine. The machine also has a cooler on demand feature, which is very neat for this type of process because there's so many starts and stops or times where they have to refit a tube where the machine is not being used. During that off cycle time, the cooler will not be running. The cooler only runs on demand after the operator strikes the arc. Therefore, it saves power when the machine is sitting running idle. We'll be setting the machine for DC. We'll also be setting our main amperage at 150 amps. However, the operator will be controlling that with the foot pedal. When a customer requests the Ducal high strength steel instead of the chromoly, the operator settings on the machine are the same. However, as the operator is manipulating the puddle, he'll have to watch the puddle a little bit closer. It doesn't respond exactly the same way as chromoly and you don't get the same coloring as you would with chromoly. The heat effect zone will also appear to be wider with the Ducal R8. However, that area of the heat effect zone is not adversely affected after it's welded where it becomes brittle. The Ducal high strength low carbon steel will actually become more pliable in that weld area. So in an impact, that area will not crack. It'll stretch with the weld before it actually cracks and breaks. The Ducal is also more resistant to shock impacts where you have an immediate impact to the, to the tube where you get these shock stress cracks in the tube area. The Ducal will bend in and actually absorb some of that impact, which is why the automotive manufacturers use it and it increases the crash test ratings of the cars that they produce. So while welding Jack's sprint car chassis together, we highlighted the Dynasty 210 TIG welder and the wireless foot control. You may have also noticed the operator was using one of our digitally elite welding helmets and the cool band. This is one of our new chassis kits that we've completed with the frame and the body and a few components. For more information on the Dynasty 210 DX TIG welder, the Miller Cool Band and the Digital Elite Welding Helmet or the Wireless Foot Pedal, check out MillerWelds.com. And for more information on J&J &J Auto Racing, visit us at J&J Auto Racing.com.